Hey everybody, this is my garden tank and I came down here this morning to shoot some video of getting all the lights turned on around the fish room here and what I wanted to show off was how beautiful the light from this LED is. I've got a fairly low budget LED panel, grow light, but while it's a low budget panel it uses very high quality chips and in a few minutes we're going to get to talking about them but the thing that makes this light so amazing is how closely it recreates natural sunlight it's got a color rendering index of well the chip is rated at 90 plus no two LEDs are ever exactly the same but Cree the manufacturer of this chip really goes above and beyond uh, industry standards when they're binning their LEDs and by binning I mean they lump them into groups of very very similarly colored and intensity and all that so that when you buy them you know what you're getting more or less and then Cree actually takes those bins and they make them into smaller and smaller bins so that from one chip to the next there's very very little fluctuation uh, in quality both in light output, efficiency, color rendering, all of that stuff. So they're rated at a color rendering of 90 plus, but I've seen three of them actually tested in videos. Two of them tested at a CRI of 94, and one of them tested at a CRI of 95. And that is amazing. I've seen a lot of... Um, compact fluorescent lights over the years in fact in a few minutes we're gonna have a look at some of the compact fluorescent lights I've used over the years as grow lights and if you're looking at photography industry lights and you're looking at compact fluorescence you'll find that the color rendering index on those is usually around 80 to 85 so that's photo quality people use those for studio lighting they use them for photography lighting and that's a CRI of 80 to 85 anything over 90 is really really impressive a CRI of 95 is just amazing I just cannot get over how stunning and beautiful and gorgeous this light is so when it lights up my fish tanks back here you actually get to see the fish and what they would look like in sunlight rather than seeing them under my LEDs now these LEDs do a pretty good job they make a pretty good light in the tank but that's all light based on us being used to unnatural light we're used to looking at things under LEDs and under fluorescence and everything we're not used to looking at natural sunlight in our fish tanks so it looks really amazing I just can't get it on video without all the glare coming out um, but the the shiners right here these golden shiners just absolutely pop and then the red and blue on my rosy side dace back there is just amazing and then of course my tilapia when he drifts into the sunlight is just stunning just absolutely gorgeous fish my green giant angelfish over there is another one that just looks absolutely amazing when it's in this light so the way these LED panels work, if you buy these LED grow lights, the panel is made by a generic sort of rebranding company. They slap their own name on it, and they usually do really low-budget panels, but they usually have really low-budget chips in them as well. And I'm not sure how to pronounce the name of the panel manufacturer. I think it's Roledro or Rolidro. I'll put a link down below to this particular panel it's listed as a 400 watt panel but it is not in fact 400 watts each chip is 117 watts i believe so it's around 250 watts total when you incorporate the cooling fans and everything it's not a 400 watt panel but leds often will rate their chips by what their capacity is rather than what they actually draw so these chips might be able to handle more load but that's not what they actually draw so if you look at some of their other 400 watt chips or panels they're really cheap they're 60 or 70 dollars this one's closer to 200 
and it's because instead of using these cheap low budget chips this panel actually puts the really really high quality Cree chips in there and the chips are CXA 3070s they're not Cree's best chip and they're not Cree's most efficient chip but they are part of their X series which is a really high intensity high output very high quality light so I actually got the panel out I've got another one we're going to be setting up so we're going to have a look at this panel just to see what it looks like turned off and that's pretty much it in the box it's not a large unit at all if I can get it out of here one handed And that's it. Now I put this chain on the back as a hanging unit, but it does come with a regular hanging um, chain or, or wire or whatever. I just don't like the wire. I've got it on that one up there. But for this one, I had it hung in a different location and I needed it really tight up against the ceiling. And I put these chains on it in order to do that. So again, the panel itself is made by a generic company. It's not a bad quality, but it's just a metal housing. It's got some heat sinks in there. It's got a fan. And then, of course, the driver that drives the LEDs. And in this case, they use a Meanwell driver, which, again, is top quality within the industry. Most good, high-quality units will use a Meanwell driver. And then we've got these two Cree... They're called Cobbs. And they, that stands for chip on board. I don't know how well you can see that or not. But it's one chip with lots and lots and lots of little tiny LEDs all over it. So there's probably about 100 diodes on each chip. But it just runs one line in and one line out like it's a single chip or a single diode. Despite the fact that it's a big cluster of them. So if you ever see a LED cob... That's what Cobb stands for. It's chip on board, and you actually get a much, much more uh, intense and efficient light. So let me put you on pause here for a minute. We'll get that one plugged in, and we'll show you what it looks like up close when I can actually sort of angle it around the room uh, handheld rather than hanging from the ceiling. All right, so I've got it plugged in now. That is the name of the brand. And then it just has a simple on off switch. You can also daisy chain this. You can actually plug a plug into this and then into another unit and then from that into another unit and you can create a chain of these. So the fans actually come on before the unit itself does. And it makes a very tight circle of light. It's slightly oblong. So you can see once you get it just a few feet off the ground, you've got a huge area of light that you're covering. Now, an important thing to remember about the way light works is that when you move away from the light source, you lose intensity very quickly. So from one foot away the difference between this and two feet away is a fourfold reduction in other words for every time you double the distance you quarter the intensity so when we're talking about this panel being up here the plants that are right here are getting so much more light than the plants that are down here and it's just because they're further away from the actual light source and that really really makes a huge difference so just getting into some general numbers uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of discussion about PAR radiation and PPFD and all of that kind of stuff but just so you understand what I'm talking about if you're not familiar with all that kind of stuff PPFD is a measurement it's the photon flux density and it tells you how many photons are hitting every square meter per second and it gives you an idea basically of how good the grow light's going to be i'll just leave it at that at one 
foot away from this light, the PPFD is over 1,000. At about 18 inches away, we're down to about 700. And then by the time you get to two feet away, you're down, you know, 400 PPFD or something like that, which again is significant, but it's not a huge amount. Uh, for example, midday sun at my latitude would put out well over 2,000 PPFD uh, midday. Early morning sun would put out around 1,000, which is what this light puts out if you're right in front of it. I mean, if you're right here, then you've got... A PPFD of around a thousand once you get a little further away from that as I said you're you're looking at much lower numbers however the difference between this and outside sunlight is that this is constant there's never a cloud in front of it and it doesn't change year-round if you look at the um, daily light interval which tells you how much energy the sun puts on your ground in any given day uh, it's measured in moles this time of year high summer my latitude my area I get between 40 and 45 moles a day this light again at one foot away now you know I don't have anything anywhere near that close to it but at one foot away this light in a 15 hour period you know all day long in 15 hours this light puts out about 30 moles so that's pretty impressive in the winter in my lowest um, time of year where I'm getting light I'm only getting about 15 moles a day so this light actually in the winter time gives me twice the amount of light I've got outside and in the summertime it gives me about two-thirds of the amount of light I'd be getting outside again that's right in front of the panel there there's just no comparing to the Sun the intensity of the Sun is just beyond anything I'm ever gonna recapitulate here in my basement obviously my basement would burst into flames if I had the, the intensity of energy that the Sun puts out but this is pretty amazing as far as what it does. Now, I've got two different kinds of plants that I grow. I've got plants that are our house plants, and they usually require really low lighting because they're indoor plants. They're never really meant to be out under the sun. They can usually do well enough under standard compact fluorescent lighting. And then I've got other plants that are plants that I overwinter which are more sun requiring plants they're outdoor plants that need to be kept over winter and those i usually need to have a pretty high intensity of sunlight and over the years i've tried all sorts of varieties of different led panels those weird colored they call them blurple um, they're blue and red and all that i've tried all them they don't really seem to do much not to mention i like to actually look at the plants and when you use those blue and red panels you just don't see any of the plant at all it's just it's really weird maybe we'll do a video and I'll show you one of them one day uh, in the meantime though we can have a look back here uh, I'll go ahead and put you on pause a minute again and we can have a look at a few of the different um, compact fluorescents I've used over the years so sit tight let me get this cleaned up and I'll be right back all right for size comparison we're gonna have a look at a few of the different compact fluorescents I've used over the years so that is a standard compact fluorescent I use those in those little domes and they work just fine for my house plants which don't require a lot of light this is a little bit bigger same basic principle though nothing really special about this I know that might look really big to some people but that's just a medium size that's getting a little bit larger and I actually use this size as overhead lighting in my work area in my basement and in my bilco door areas this is just a nice good bright light but again doesn't really do anything much beyond what your typical house plant can deal with and this one's starting to get a little more significant this one is a full 125 watt that's not 125 watt equivalent that is a full 125 watt compact fluorescent and that is significant enough that if used with a reflector, 
you can actually grow plants that require more serious lighting and I've done my outdoor plants and I've overwintered them and I've messed around with some little garden areas here in the fish room in the past and I've done some you know under my tank lighting um, before I had all these purple skirts on here I used to, to put everything from the lights we're looking at now to shop lights and I would have them under here and then I had plants all on the bottom down under here so I've done a variety of things over the years and I've used a variety of different lights but we've got one last light to see and that is actually still in the reflector and that's what I used to overwinter everything last year and I did not have a terrible amount of luck with it until I switched over to this LED we're using so hang on one second and I'll show you my biggest compact fluorescent so that is a significant compact fluorescent you might have laughed when you saw this one and I said that that's not very big but by comparison I don't want to try to unscrew it out of here the uh, reflector inside this um, well the reflective material inside this uh, reflector wing is actually like a, a pliable mylar and fingerprints get on it really easily and everything else so I definitely you know I'm very careful about the way I unscrew this light and take it out of there but that gives you a better idea of how big the actual LED I mean the uh, actual compact fluorescent is itself so this is what I had hanging in my kitchen last year to overwinter my house plants so that burns 250 watts which is more than that LED uses it's I don't even know what the color rendering index on that one would be rated for. It wasn't really rated that way. It's just rated as a grow light. But I have seen tests of that light done and at about 9 or 10 inches away because, again, it's just the, the intensity is nowhere near the same as what you've got with these LEDs. With this LED at 9 or 10 inches away, you'd actually burn your plants up. It would just be too intense. But that big light with that reflector at about 9 or 10 inches away only puts out about 500 PPFD. So this one at 18 inches away puts out far more than that. And what's even more important is the quality of light. It's the color spectrum. And that brings us back to what I was saying about the... CRI being 95 this light just recreates sunlight so accurately that it just does amazing things for the plants now Cree did not make this chip to be a grow light Cree just set out to make a chip that mimicked sunlight as closely as they possibly could for the purposes of displaying art or lighting merchandise filming shooting video portrait photography whatever you needed really 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 high accuracy color rendering for is what they created this chip for it was you know it was just sort of a no-brainer to say well you know what loves natural sunlight more than plants and so people started using this chip as a grow light and it's just amazing it's like nothing i've ever seen in all the years i've been messing around with different types of lights so while those compact fluorescents are really bright and you know again that 250 watt compact fluorescent will light up a room um, it made our kitchen obnoxious to walk through whereas this one doesn't this one makes our kitchen look like it's just a beautiful sunny day no matter what time of year it is or what the weather outside is that other fluorescent it's just got that fluorescent light look and you just don't get the same quality of light even though it might be really bright and might be really intense and you might be getting that ppfd of 500 the quality of those photons that are hitting and the light spectrums that are hitting and making up that 500 ppfd isn't the same as if this one was far enough away you know if you positioned it so that it was also getting the same um, intensity light you know anything growing under this would still do way better than anything growing under the fluorescence under the same intensity 
because of the high quality of this light, if that makes any sense. I know it can kind of get confusing, and I feel like I've been talking about these lights for a long time now, so I'm probably starting to ramble on and go on in circles. But we will talk more about this if you're interested. I know this has got more to do with gardening and growing plants than it does with keeping fish and fish tanks, but this is how I'm lighting up my fish tanks and lighting this area. You can also see that the natural algae really appreciates having all this light on it all day long too. Um, so we do have that second LED panel. I have removed some of the lower lighting uh, type plants we've had back here. I had some hosta and stuff back here. So we're going to use that other panel probably to create a really bright spot back here. And we're going to try to go for some really um, vivid, colorful flowering plants as the summer starts winding to an end and we start moving on into the autumn and uh, winter weather. We should have some really bright, colorful, cheery flowers down here thanks to these LED panels. So there you go. That was my sort of unexpected long-winded video about these LEDs thanks for watching hope that made some kind of sense and you got something out of that feel free to ask any questions or leave any comments and of course don't forget to subscribe there'll be plenty more coming up and I'm gonna put this one in my aquarium lighting playlist so thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you real soon on the next one